This is the flipped lesson on Boyle's law. Boyle's law is the gas law that deals with volume and pressure. So essentially Boyle's law is an inverse relationship and when we look at this, it, what we see is that as pressure increases, the volume is going to decrease. So we're going to look at a diagram now of what Boyle's law is talking about. So essentially what we're going to use is this apparatus at the right where we've got our molecules in here. A thermometer will, re will do this diagram for a lot of our gas laws. So we've got a movable piston, a thermometer, a pressure gauge, and our molecules. So hopefully you remember that those are our four measurable parts of a gas, number of moles, temperature, volume, and pressure. So gas pressure is created by the collisions between the moving gas particles and the walls of the container. So the gas pressure is defined as the force of these collisions divided by the area of the walls. So hopefully it's kind of making sense with Boyle's law. If I decrease that volume, those gas molecules are going to collide with the sides of the wall more and it will increase the pressure. So the number of gas particles is kept constant by being sure that the system has no leaks and the temperature is also held constant by allowing heat to flow into or out of the system to keep the inter internal temperature equal to the constant external temperature. So that's the way that we keep the number of moles and temperature constant and we're looking at adjusting the pressure and the volume for Boyle's law. So when the volume is decreased, the concentration of gas, so the number of gas particles per volume, actually increases. This increases the number of particles close to any area of the wall, and it increases the number of collisions per second per area, and therefore increases the force per unit area. So we'll see this happening as the piston is moving down, those molecules start hitting the sides of the container more. So we've decreased the volume, we've increased the particles per volume, more particles are close to the wall, thus more collisions and force per area. So as you can see, our pressure went up, our pressure gauge went up, and our volume went down. So the number of gas particles and temperature are held constant again, and the decreased volume leads to an increased gas pressure. Vice versa, an increased volume will lead to a decreased gas pressure. So there's kind of your diagram of Boyle's law. So this PowerPoint slide is just showing you again another version of the pressure and the volume. So my volume reading is 7 here and 2.7 here. So as we can see we're going to decrease the volume which we should be able to look at and say our pressure should increase and our reading does say it increases. Again, the temperature and the number of moles are held constant. So it's always good to remember that there's four measurable parts of a gas, pressure, volume, temperature, and number of moles. So the effects of decreasing the volume of a sample of gas at constant pressure, or constant temperature, again, the molecules hit more often, so the pressure is going to increase. So again, this is just a picture of what I just showed you on the computer screen, where here's, here I've got a volume, it's decreasing so those molecules are going to hit the side of the container more often, thus increasing the pressure. Boyle's law mathematically is P1V1 equals P2V2 and our ones and twos simply denote initial and final. Um, again, this is inversely proportional and if I were to draw a graph of Boyle's law, it would look like this with pressure and volume labeled and an inversely proportional graph looks something like that. So it's not just a straight down, so please make sure that you remember this graph. And we'll actually be doing this in the lab and you'll be able to look at that and actually graph that in our Boyle's Law lab coming up. So if we have an example problem here, so a sample of O2 has a volume of 100 mils and a pressure of 200 torr, what will its volume be if the pressure is increased to 300 torr? Again, temperature is kept constant, and as you can see here, it doesn't really talk about the number of molecules, so assume it's also kept constant. So the first thing that you want to think about is what should be happening in this problem. So what's the relationship? So if I'm looking at, I've got mils and tor, so I know more about the, the pressure. And so if I know more about the pressure, I should be thinking, okay, if the pressure is going to increase, then I assume mathematically my volume should decrease. So when you're, when you're doing your math, I always want you to think about what's the relationship, and once you're done with your math, you can check to make sure that you're actually correct based on your understanding of the law. So now we're going to set up our, our math. So P1V1 equals P2V2, and it's just an algebra problem. We're going to plug in our variables. Make sure always that the volume and the pressure units are the same, so both of these would have to be tor, 
and both of these would have to be mils. So now I can solve for V2. So V2 is 66.67. So because my pressure increased, we said that my volume should decrease, and that indeed happened. So my relationship stuck. I'm good. I checked my problem based on my understanding of the relationship. Here's another graph just showing you pressure and volume. I drew that for you as well. You're going to be graphing this and showing that relationship in our lab. So it's just showing that pressure is halved. And then here's just an inverse plot of that same thing. And then here's a graph just showing several gases at pressures below one atmosphere. Um, so just, again, our ideal gas is right here. Okay, so again, at lower pressures, it does not act as much like an ideal gas as we want it to. Okay, so that's all for Boyle's Law, and the next will be on Charles' Law.